Hello and welcome to this lesson on Python tree map visualization. In this lesson, you'll learn to build a Python tree map by using Squarify, a library that features a pure Python implementation of the Squarify tree map layout algorithm. So, to begin this lesson, let us understand what is a tree map. A Python tree map visualization plots hierarchical data using rectangles nested together of varying sizes. The size of each rectangle is in proportion to the amount of data the tree map represents out of the whole. Here you can see an example of two Python tree maps laid side by side. The Buzzard 2010 tree map shows that alcohol received the most buzzard amount in 2010 and food received the least. On the other hand, the Buzzard 2020 tree map shows that food, diapers and baby stuff and rent received almost equal amount of buzzard that year whereas health insurance received the list. Now that you know what is a tree map and how to read it, we'll move on to learn how to actually visualize it in Python. But before we get started with writing our first line of code, I want to quickly talk about the sponsor for this video, which is Internex Drive. Internex Drive is a data privacy focused cloud storage that is an alternative to Google Drive. It's secure by design and uses zero knowledge encryption, which means only the user can access the secure data and no one else, not even the service provider. It is also a multi device platform and you can use it through a web application, a desktop application, or a mobile application. And if you sign up through the link in the video description, you'll get 2 gigabytes of free cloud storage on Internet Drive for a lifetime. Now, let's continue onwards with the lesson. So to get started with Python tree maps, you need to first install the Squarify package or library in Python. You can install the library by writing the following command which is pip install Squarify in your command line or terminal and executing it. And if you're using Jupyter Notebooks as an IDE, you can also install the library by using the following line of code which is an exclamation sign followed by pip install Squarify. I won't run this for now since I've already installed the library but you can run this on your end and install the library on your machine. And once the installation is complete, you can write the following line of code to import the library which is import Squarify. So if I run this, I've successfully imported the Squarify library in Python. If you do not encounter any error when importing the library using this line of code, you have also successfully installed and imported the Squarify library in Python on your end. Now you can move on to visualizing a tree map in Python. Let's see how we can do that. You can create a basic Python tree map in just two lines of code by using the plot method from the Squarify library and by writing the sizes of the rectangle as shown over here. So first I'm importing the Squarify library as I've shown you over here. Then I'm calling the plot method off of the Squarify library and I'm defining the sizes that I want for the rectangles in the tree map. So the size 40 will have the largest area covered, then 30, then 25, then 5. So if I run both of these lines of code, there you have a Python tree map already visualized and although we cannot get much information from this, we can quickly figure out some things. So first of all, the largest rectangle portion over here is probably related to the size 40. The second largest, which is this one, is probably related to the size 30. And this one over here in purple, it's 25. And the last one over here with the smallest size is 5. And you can see how the size of the tree map differs based on the sizes that we give over here. 5 has the smallest area covered, 40 has the largest. But one thing, it's pretty hard to understand which size is correlated with which one, especially when we're working with 30 and 25 because they're so close. And if you run these lines of code again, you'll see that the color map changes every time we run it. So it's kind of hard to understand what is happening over here and which color is related to which size. So to handle this, we can also specify the color parameter in the plot method as I've done over here. So here you can see that I've defined a list of colors that I want the sizes to be represented with. So if I run this, you can see that the color red here is representing the size 40, the color blue is representing the size 30, the color yellow is representing the size 5 and the color green is representing the size 25. So it's a one to one relationship with the sizes and the colors. 
and if I run this again, the color map will stay the same. Now let us make it even more easier to understand the tree map and understand which size is related to which portion of the tree map. So for this, we can assign different labels to these rectangles over here. And for that, we can use the label parameter. So as before, I'm calling the plot method from the Squarify library. I'm setting the sizes. I'm setting the color that I want these sizes to be represented with. And finally, using the label parameter, I'm also specifying the labels that I want for each of these sizes. So if I run this, you can see that we have our labels. So again, this is a one to one relationship. So 40 has the label A, 30 has the label B, 5 has the label C and 25 has the label D. And one thing that suits out to me right now is it's kind of hard to look at label B over here. So let's decrease the opacity of the colors in this plot itself. To do this, we have another parameter, which is alpha. So over here, we have all of the code as before, but I'm adding this additional parameter, which is alpha. And by default, the value of alpha for this tree map is one. So we want to decrease it a little and the value range for alpha is zero to one. So I just want to have it at 0.7. So if I run this, you can see that the opacity of the plot has decreased. And if I decrease it much further, let's say 0.2, you can see now it's much more faded out. I'll leave it to 0.7 for now because you can clearly see the colors as well as the labels in this case. Now, one final thing, as you can see in the tree map, the axis values that we have over here do not provide any additional information or insight about the tree map. So let's remove these values by using matplotlib's pyplot module. So over here, I'm importing the Squarify library as we've been doing before. Then I'm importing the pyplot module from matplotlib library as plt by writing import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Then I'm using the plot method again from the Squarify library and I'm passing all of these parameters as we've seen up until now. And finally, this is something new. So from the pyplot module of the matplotlib library, I'm calling the access method and I'm setting it as off. So if I run all of these lines of code, you can see that we have a complete Python tree map over here. And this tree map over here looks almost similar to what we had seen at the start of this lesson for the buzzard tree map examples. Now let us move on to a slightly advanced concept and learn how to use a real world data set to plot a Python tree map. So for this, I'll be following a three step procedure. The first step is to load the data set in Python using C1. I'll just be using a dummy data set for now, but you can use any data set that you want. You can read in with pandas since you have the read CSV method already available and you can load in the data set. Then the second step is to group by the data to get aggregated data values for specific columns of the data set that we'll be working with. Once the group by is done and the data is aggregated, we'll plot the tree map in Python using a similar way that we have seen up until now. Now to load in a real world data set, we'll be using the Seaborn library. And if you do not have the library already installed, you can install it by writing the following command in a command line or terminal, which is pip install Seaborn. I've already installed it. So go ahead on your end and install this library. Now let us start off by reading in the Titanic data set using the Seaborn library. For this, I'm importing Seaborn as SNS which is our Seaborn library. Then I'm importing the matplotlib spyplot module as PLT so that we can use it further down the line. Then to load in the inbuilt Titanic data set, I'm calling the load data set method off of the C1 library and I'm specifying the data set, which is Titanic over here. So this portion of the code loads in the data set as a pandas data frame. And then here I'm assigning this data set to the variable Titanic. And since it's a pandas data frame, we can call the head method off of the variable Titanic. So if I run all of these lines of code, you can see that we have our data set over here. And this looks like a real world data set that we often come across. We do not need much information about what this data set is actually about, but still this is a strong foothold to actually start working with a real world data set. Now the second step, if you remember, is to perform group by and aggregate data values for specific columns. 
The reason we're grouping and aggregating the information down is because the size of this data set or the shape of this data set is quite large. So if we just have a look at the number of rows, there are 891 different rows. So if you want to just plot a tree map using the A's values for this data frame, it's kind of hard to visualize because there are 891 different values for the A's column over here. So if we're able to aggregate the information down and if we're able to look at only specific values for specific scenarios, we'll have a much more representation of the information in the Python tree map. For this tutorial, let us look at how many people survived the sinking of the Titanic based on the passenger class, which is P class over here. And we'll be using the survive column for this. So you can do this by using the group by method from the pandas data frame, which is Titanic. In this line of code, I'm calling the group by method from the pandas data frame and I'm grouping by the P class because we want to see how many passengers survived the sinking of the Titanic. Once I've used the P class column to group by this data frame, I'm just finding the sum of values for the survive column using the sum method of the survive column over here. So once the sum has been done, that is we've grouped by based on the P class column and found the sum of the survive column, we're assigning the aggregated data frame to the variable grouped underscore DF and I'm printing it out over here. So if I run both of these lines of code, you can see that for P class one, we have 136 passengers who survived the sinking of the Titanic. For P class two, we have 87 and for P class three, we have 119. So during the aggregation, when we're using the sum method, we're just adding the values which are one over here. So for each P class, we're adding the values of one corresponding to the value of the P class. Now, finally, let us visualize this information using a Python tree map. So you've already seen this before. We just call the plot method from the Squarify library. And in this case, for the sizes, we just provide the values, which is the values over here of the grouped data frame. And for the colors, since we have three different values, we can specify three different color values as well. And for the label, we want to use the index values. So the label for the value 136 will be one, for the value 87 will be two, and for the value 119 will be three. And again, I'm specifying the alpha, which controls the opacity of the plot to be 0.7. And finally, I'm removing the access values by calling the access method from the pyplot module and setting it as off. So if I run these lines of code, here you can see that we've visualized our Python tree map. And one over here represents P class one, two over here represents P class two, three over here represents P class three. So as you can see, P class one should have the largest size. Then after that, P class three should have the largest size. Then finally, P class two should have the least size. So that's the same over here. Now, one final thing before we end this lesson is learning how to plot multiple tree maps using subplots. Because as you remember at the start of this lesson, I had shown you two different tree maps side by side. So let's plot that out. To do that, we can simply use the subplot method from matplotlib's pyplot module. And in this case, you have to set the X parameter in the plot method of squarify to specify which axis you'd want the tree map to be plotted on. Also, the axis off method should be called off of both axes to disable axis values in both subplot axes. I'll show you what that means in this example over here. First, I'm importing the squarify library by writing import squarify. Then I'm importing the matplotlib spyplot module as plt over here. Then I'm creating two matplotlib subplots by using the subplots method from the pyplot module of matplotlib and specifying the argument and rows, which is the number of rows as one and the number of columns as two for the subplot. So this returns back a tuple of the figure and the axis for this subplot. Then since we want to plot two different Python tree maps, I'm calling the plot method twice over here from the squarify library. And in each case, I'm defining different values for the parameters, but this parameter is new over here, which is x equals to x zero. So this means that we want to plot on the first column. And this means that we want to plot on the second column. And finally, we're removing the access values for both of these subplots by calling the access method off of the subplots and specifying the parameter as off in both of the cases. So just again, a quick summary, we're importing the necessary libraries, 
we're creating two matplotlib subplots we're plotting two different python tree maps and we've already specified which axis of the subplot that we want to plot on and finally we're removing the axis values for both of the subplots individually over here so if i run all of these lines of code here you can see we have two python tree maps side by side and if we look at the labels of these tree maps the first tree map has the label abc the second tree map has the label xyz and here you can see the first tree map has the label abc and the second tree map has the label xyz this is how you can plot multiple tree maps in python using the subplots method from matplotlib and this is possible again because Squarify is built on top of matplotlib great you have successfully learned how to build a python tree map from scratch using a list of sizes as well as a real world data set Remember that the Python tree map made using Squarify can be further modified using the matplotlib library. And as an exercise, I would suggest that you plot out four different Python tree maps side by side and one on top of another. And in that way, you can understand how the tree maps can be handled when working with subplots. So that is it for this lesson. Hope you guys subscribe to the channel and stick around for more content like this. Bye bye.